Hey guys, welcome to part 2 on my video on op-amp electronic circuits. Um, and in this video, we'll be continuing on from my previous video. So, um, we did the whole properties one and the introductory part. Now, and we also talked about the main functions. So, what do we talk about now? So, we are aware of the properties of an ideal operational amplifier. But using that, can we um, deduce how we can use that as a comparator? Now, what's a comparator? That's going to make sense in a while, so no biggie. So, the operational amplifier as a comparator. <sighs> So this is the op amp being all high and mighty and being part of a really complex looking circuit. But if you like take a bigger look, it's gonna make sense, a hundred percent sense, and there won't be any ambiguities that's gonna get you or me in trouble in the exams. Right? So, while I did talk about a lot of various stuff, um, about the basics, but I, what I didn't mention was this 0 volt line, which is really integral to um, compared to circuits, as well as all of the circuits that incorporate an op-amp. And actually, the book I usually use by David Sang, Graham Jones, Gurinder Tashira, and Richard Woodside gives a better explanation of this, so I will read it out. The passage for you, it's on page 393. So now, there's actually this interesting thing they've told before that explanation, and they're, they're saying that the op pump is not like a transformer. Because in, op in an ideal transformer, the input and the output power is the same. But such is not the case with an op-amp because an op-amp's output power is much greater than the input power. And how does it achieve that? Well, to achieve that, it needs two power supplies. Okay, so it needs two power supplies and that's actually going to be mentioned in this book as well but just not all that clearly and in a general um, diagrammatic representation you would like show those two power supplies and not one of them as the plus nine and the minus nine connections in the previous diagrammatic representation and then there's also something called a zero volt line and um, so here it is uh, the famous zero volt line but what's it do doing over there so one power supply will be between the plus nine volt and the zero volt line and the other would also be between the minus nine volt and the zero volt line Again, you're going to be a bit confused. What does that mean? Why is it above? Why is it below? And why does that make it plus 9 and the other one negative 9? Well, as you can see, for this one, it's the positive end of the battery that is facing the op-amp. And that makes this the positive end. And even though the magnitude of this battery or the magnitude of the voltage supplied by this is the same as the magnitude that is supplied by this but because it is a negative side that is facing the op amp so it becomes the negative supplier and the zero volt line is basically sort of like a reference point because it's always zero right it's gonna make sense don't run it um, and why is this zero volt line so important? It's important because all voltages are measured 
relative to this potential that is in comparison to it. If the potential of the inverting input is V minus, so we usually represent the output to the inverting input as V minus and the one to the non inverting input as being V plus. So if you're assuming that the potential of the inverting input is V minus, all right, then the potential difference or the voltage between that input and the zero volt line is also V minus, all right, because we're using this as sort of a standard to measure all of the inputs and all of the output and basically all of the voltages that are concerned with this op-amp circuitry. So what is the what voltage you use for the power supply is actually pretty variable. The thing that is common is that the positive and the negative supply voltages are of equal magnitude and you may write them as plus Vs and minus Vs. And the connections of the power supplies to the op amp are often left out for clarity, but they're always there. So you don't always make all of this. But it's assumed to be there. And like I said, the largest voltage that an op amp can produce is a value close to the supply voltage. So when the output voltage reaches either supply voltage, and now we know that we have two supply voltages, we have positive maximum value and a negative minimum value. So when the output voltage reaches either supply voltage, whether it is positive or negative, it is said to be saturated. And I will do something which has probably like thrown all of your concepts back again. No worries, this is going to make sense when we do the comparator circuit. So I suggest you have your, like before you have your register with you and you draw out this really complicated looking thing. So when an op amp is used, it is usually connected to a dual power supply. So the output voltage can be either positive or negative. And such a power supply can be represented as two sets of batteries as shown in figure 21.2. So you draw this out. What do you draw out first? First, you can dry, dra draw out the zero volt line because it's really significant. So it's just basically a straight line at the end of which we have this strange looking symbol if you're familiar with is actually the one for Earth. It's the symbol for Earth. All right. And then we have our beloved op-amp. So you like label the inverting and non-inverting and you make the inputs and then you label V minus and V plus relative to zero volt line. Remember it's always used as a reference. V minus and V plus. So what do we know now? And then the V out is also supposed supposed to be written in reference to the zero volt line. Be sure to draw that out. And then comes the problem of the supply voltage. It's not as difficult as you would think. But be sure that the batteries are facing the right way up and also be sure to show the connection to the earth line because that is really significant and the other way around you should be careful that the batteries are facing the right way again these are some things you need to be aware of careful of when you're drawing a comparative circuit so hopefully we have like drawn most of it. It doesn't have to be neat, it just has to make sense to you. 
and to your teacher. So what is the link or the fusion point between the two batteries referred to as? So this is battery 1 and this is battery 2 and battery 1 is supplying plus Vs that is the positive power supply and battery 2 is supplying the negative power supply and the point where they are fused is referred to as the zero volt line. You can actually write this down. This battery is supplying the positive supply voltage aka plus V and S in the subscript and the other one you can write this battery is supplying the negative supply voltage aka minus Vs and you can also write have same magnitude in case you forget about it writing stuff down for easy reading can be really helpful and then they've told us what the zero volt line does it provides reference from which the voltages on the input and the output are made so we can write it provides a reference so how do you find out v out this question actually arose a while ago that how do we have v out if we have two inputs and why is one input considered to be inverting and the other con considered to be non-inverting because the impact of the inverting input is that it can invert the output voltage is it gonna make sense it will no worries because it v out is equal to v plus minus v minus so what does that mean it means that if v minus is big enough right so if v minus is bigger than v plus then v out is gonna be negative that is it is going to have the opposite polarity compared to the polarities of the input and if v minus is less than v plus then that means that the output voltage will have the same polarity as the input voltages so the inverting amplifies basically what determines the polarity of V out. So it's a good idea to write that down. In this scenario, V out is shown to be positive because of the direction. If this were in the other direction, that would mean that V minus is greater than V plus and so the polarity has been um, has been shifted and the reason both of these are pointing in the same direction is because they're in the same direction they have the same polarity and be, us calling this V minus doesn't mean that it has the opposite potential we only call it V minus to show that it is the input to the inverting terminal So we can write V minus, V plus and V out, we can write out in the same direction and then we can say that means that V minus is less than V plus and then we can draw V minus and V plus in the same direction and draw out V out in, in the opposite and then we can write an explanation that V minus is greater than V plus and that is led to the 
reversal of the polarity. Divided number one is connected to the zero volt line, and you should totally show that. And the input from the non inverting is actually connected to a potential divider whose potential division can change. In this one, it is connected across, across a potential divider with an LED and both of the potential dividers the one with the constant resistance and the one with the changeable are connected to each other at the other end and connected to the battery so again you don't have to really draw this out probably in your exams but to get a good idea of the structure in my opinion is really key and other devices other than the LED can be fitted maybe we can use a thermistor or something but back to how all of this actually works so the two resistors of equal resistance are yep they provide a constant resistance of th they constant voltage of 3 volt at the inverting input because the top resistor is connected to the 6 volt and the bottom resistor is connected to the 0 volt line right so 6 3 3 0 so there's basically a potential of 3 at the non-inverting input. You can write that down. Let's move on to the next one. So when the light dependent resistor is in darkness, it's going to have a really high resistance. So then its resistance will be greater than 10 kilo ohm. And 10 kilo ohm is significant because the constant resistor has a value of 10 kilo ohm. Right? However, in daylight, however, and so when that is the case that it is in the darkness, then the voltage at the non-inverting input will be greater than 3 volt. 
So that might not make a lot of sense at the moment. As to why, because if that has a really high resistance, it means that there will be like a huge drop across it. And so if there is a huge drop across it, it means that it's going to have a high potential. At a higher potential than 3. And why is that? It's because if this is 6 and this is 10 and this is much greater than 10, it means that only a little of the voltage will drop across here, say just 1. So if there's just 1 volt drop across here, there will be a potential of 5 volt over here. But in daylight, the resistance of the LDR will be less than 10 kilo ohm and so the voltage and the non-inverting input will be less than 3 because there would be a lot of drop over the constant 10 kilo ohm resistor so if it was 6 volt over here 4 volt would have dropped and so we would just have a potential of 2 volts somewhere over here so the output is a 4 dependent on the level of light illumination. And this is why competitive circuits are really cool because they are depending on some physical factor, the value of their output. Because 